My words become things all hell the king Now I got him walking on water Covered in the blood of the Christ A rubber glove and a knife Prophet Muhammad came to restore the order Spectators sit back and watch Slave ships pull off the dock Demigods round up the flock Time running short Got a race against the hands of the clock 2020 something pull it off the lot Posted on any block You say a henny shot Pour a libation for the fallen It's been a lot of death Thefts right over left Heart of a line line right under my chest That's a god like God prolific God like God -like. Money longer than sloth and ass The flock tight Meditation slap boxing with Satan Cracking the Peace to the gods. Uh huh. Wings spread wide, coming through angelic. Frankincense and myrrh be the essence. You can smell it. Rocking different color stones, niggas think I'm psychedelic. Asiatics can never be gods. Let them tell it. Cosmetically groomed, suede blazer with suede shoes. Smooth, don't have to prove that I pay dues. My track record speaks for itself. You hear the language, the dignity you see me with now. Came in the game with. I hang with imperial nobles, wine Kenobis, light bodies, etherically mobile, spiritual OGs, riding around. They say they want this more science, so I'ma give it to them. Islamism, no illusions when I'm interviewing. Know what I'm doing, no confusion, I ain't in the cooning. I'm in the moving units, out here starting revolutions. In love with shooters, making masterminds out the goonies. I got a booming out here zooming on the plane of soul. I tell them, take me to the grove, they like Islam mode. I'm letting them know this not a show, this all systems go. It's two selves, one man, both high and low. I'm so spiritual, the indigo spit a vibe. I'm so lyrical, a miracle that I survive. It's still my five to the four, I can see him coming. Plus, my angel got the angle with the engine running. It's all justice, freedom, peace, truth, and love. Yeah. Hey, five on the right, two on the left, man. You know what time it is. Yo. We just moors in America, soar through the shores and endure criminal acts of war on our character. Seven years after the fourth score, no reward. Shout out to the most courageous. They was jumping over barriers. Where does that compare to you? We come from a place where you scared to visit our area. We come from a place where it's scary for good Samaritans. Heavy luggage we carry in. Babies having babies. It's crazy being American. Praise the one and only Allah. There's no comparison. La ilaha. Ila Allah, body and very gin Laughing at you clowns like ha-ha Dodging a Nephilim Conquer lower self with a high Follow your regimen Way before they came we were gods And now we specimen Tried to take the light from our eyes Thank God for Edison Then they put the wool on our eyes It's so embarrassing Now we travel frequently We should invest in Sheraton All of us got gold on our bodies Whenever we stepping in Screaming Ramadan, move a rock Training the flesh again Wishing we could move as a unit just like the Mexicans, dodging all the foods with estrogen, synthetic medicines, all 
sin isn't devilish Sometimes the decisions that you make come for a better gift Sometimes when you sin is to relate to all your brethren Heavenly gates all in our face, we the champions We live in the sky, we see the angels on the chariots Waiting on the $20 bill, face a Harriet I bet you I'ma carry it I'm in love with music to the point I wanna marry it But my love for people is greater, so I write messages Largest spending power, but we still sit at a deficit Living amongst prejudice, even at our residence Moors in America, flourishing, excellent Let's buy up some neighborhoods and groom our own president Yeah And I come to you today With all intentions of spreading Love Truth Peace Freedom And justice say peace and thanks to everybody that's here make sure you hit that like and share button we're going to be speaking with the brother crumb tv today um this brother is doing an amazing job over on his platform if you're not already subscribed to his channel make sure you do that um all the links for the brother's website and um also his uh youtube are in the description so make sure you visit that brother's platform as well as i said he's doing a great job with the research um the interviews everything that he's doing i really love with the work that that brother's um, doing. And today we're gonna to be speaking about the Barbary Pirates. I would love to go ahead and bring this brother on right now. He's here with us. All right, peace brother, how you doing? Peace and love, good brother. All is well, all is truly well. I wanna give you high honors and perfect praise and thank you for having me. All right, gratitude brother. It's, it's my pleasure to have you on here, really you. When I say you're doing a great job, I mean it. Like, I'm subscribed to the platform. I've seen several of the videos that you put out. So, really, you know, you, you've been consistent and doing a great job. And um, you came with some really good information, too. Like, what people are about to see today is, is incredible. Because people have been seeing, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbeans and um, films and, and all of these things. But a lot of people, like, have no idea um, of the real history behind it. And so I'm so glad that you brought this topic up. And um, I know you have your uh, your uh, information ready. Uh, would you mind if we go ahead and bring that up? It would be my honor. It, all right, perfect. Here we go. So um, right. before I officially get into my spiel, I wanted to let the family know that um, it won't be a very long time. I don't know, a week. I, I would assume no more than 15 calendar days before I have the brother on my platform and he's going to um, double back with me and we're going to re-review the Barbary Pirates, but he's going to do his rendition because he's a master student as well. So um, just to let the family know, get ready for that. This is not the end. This is the beginning. He's going to close us out on my channel. So, you know, what you're seeing is unity. You're seeing partnership. You're seeing uh, uh uh, a a organized delivery of information. So uh, now that I've said all of that, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Perfect, perfect. So um, one thing I want to say, what what um, made you get into this line of um, of research? This, uh, oh, the, the pirates. I'm so glad you said that. Let me let me back up. Let me let me just kind of start from the beginning. Um, 
I was put on to more science by Kenick L., who domiciles in uh, the Virginia Beach jurisdiction. He um, he opened my eyes. Uh, you know, I was, I want to say, quote unquote, smart prior to that. But more science really changed my life and took everything I do to the next level. So I just want to give honors to my grand sheik. I want to give honors to uh, the temple that raised me or just kind of because they don't like when I say words like raised. It sounds a little Masonic. But, you know, they did kind of bring me into the understanding of who I am, my nationality, so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, I just want to put it respect out to him. I believe he's watching right now and to uh, the Moors who have done their part to really uh, bring me to where I'm at. I don't want to, you know, say, oh, I did it. No, no. It was through the support of brothers like uh, Kinnick L., Carrie Alende L., these good, uh, upstanding people that have really uh, brought me to this level. So I can't claim it for myself. I honestly can't. All right. And gratitude to those brothers as well. Um, I've spoken with the brother Alinde L before. Yes, definitely. They, they're also doing great work and putting out great literature as well. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, this is amazing. Um, so if you would like to, um, uh, let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, you have a lot of information and um, I know the people are going to enjoy this. So let's let's go ahead and go. Absolutely. So when we're dealing with, you know, right. Yeah. Barbary pirates is probably not a term most of us, even more have, you know, are familiar with. So when we're dealing with a pirate, I need to understand that there are a lot of distinctions. It's not one plus one. So um, the first thing is pirate or privateer. What are the differences between a pirate and a privateer? That's the question. Here's the answer. Pirate from the Latin word pirata describes those who are enticed by wealth directly under that this is at the far left privateer from their vessels of the same name describes an errand running seafarer he just goes you know this is no, no, no difference than, than fedex <laughs> pirate equals this is the new terminology outlaws who rob pirates i'm sorry who rob ships for their own personal gain uh, directly under that on the far right privateer at the service of a sovereign there's that word they pillage legal legally according to the laws of warfare this is war this is not the regular scenario uh directly at the very bottom initially a privateer blackbeard chose independence and became a pirate to the far bottom right julius caesar was reportedly captured by sicilian pirates Julius Caesar was caught by Moors. Wow. The Moors caught. Oh, he's the greatest. All right, he's great. I'm not taking that away from him. But you got to uh, you gotta acknowledge whoever it was that knocked out Tyson, you got to put some respect on his name. Whoever knocked out Muhammad Ali, put some respect. Because these are the greatest people we know. That's the same thing with the Moors. Tap in. Moving forward. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, so here we go. And let me just go over here because I can't see it. Uh, uh, almost ready. Sorry. Okay. Um, the term Barbary pirates really stuck once the Ottomans started to flex their muscle across the Mediterranean Sea. Look at the word Mediterranean family. Mediterranean is Medi, meaning middle, and Terranean, meaning land. Anything around the Mediterranean is Middle Earth. According to the, the, the Norse, according to Thor and the gang, Midgard. Anyway. The Ottomans started to flex their muscle across the Mediterranean Sea towards the end of the 15th century. The Ottoman Navy started to aid the last remnants of Muslim power in Iberia. Ottoman expansion went hand in hand with the rise of Barbary pirates. In addition to greatly expanding their own navy, the Ottoman also relied on corsairs. Here's another one. So we got pirates, we have privateers, and here's another term. Get your pens and paper, write this down. A corsair, which is another term for privateers. Definition of corsair: a private person or ship that has commit uh, that was commissioned by a state to carry out warfare against another state. This is the, this is no different than McDonald's hiring Grubhub. <laughs> oh, I don't work for McDonald's. I just deliver through Grubhub. Oh, okay. Sorry for the confusion. I'm a privateer. I'm a corsair. That was commissioned by the state to carry out warfare against another state. This is why the Barbary pirates are sometimes referred to as the Barbary Corsairs. Did you want to add something or shall I continue? Well, um, please continue. But I do want to just say one thing 
just what you just dropped that's powerful and then also before when you mentioned you just briefly mentioned that caesar was captured by sicilian pirates like that's that's crazy you know that's wild yeah i i, I oftentimes make the, dis, the distinction when we talk about europe we have to talk about europe's uh um um compartmentally you're going to look at europe you're going to see two europe's you're going to see north europe you're going to see south europe north europe is quote unquote real europeans blonde hair blue eyes whatever the case may be uh, uh pale skin milky white go to south europe italy uh uh france greece um uh portugal spain this you're not going to find blonde hair and blue eyes there why because of the moors sorry sorry europe one drop rule done <laughs> i'm just joking <laughs> but uh yeah absolutely 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 okay so uh moving on from the beginning of the 17th century onwards the ottoman barbary coast states of tripoli tunis and algiers gained greater autonomy this meant that the activity of the barbary pirates would become less focused on achieving political goals and more so on drawing economic benefits in the shape of plunder. This decrease in Ottoman central authority allowed the Barbary pirates to focus very heavily on their most lucrative business, slavery. Historians have flouted numbers as high as 1.25 million Europeans enslaved by the pirates from 1530 to 1780. I want to ask the listening audience really quickly, because we just said a number, 1780. In America, hold that number in your mind, 1780. In America, when did slavery end? I'll give you just, I don't know, 15 seconds. Does anybody in America, chattel slavery, don't be funny, please. What year did chattel slavery end in America? Because this went on till 1780. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, I know there's a delay, and some people probably know the answer. They just couldn't get to it in time, but it was 1865. 1865 is when chattel slavery ended. They continued their slavery all the way up until 70, 17. 80. Shout out to Reginald Time uh, Tim's L. Let me put some respect on his name. He's a master student, um, cut from the same cloth as me. So you know, this time span is crazy because you know what were we doing in 1780? We were you know 1776. We got free uh, in terms of July 4th, and if you celebrate that type of thing. But moving on, pirate raids were such a big issue that coastal settlements along the Mediterranean coast, you know, Spain, France, Italy, suffered depopulation. It wasn't just Southern Europe either. The intrepid Barbary pirates sailed into the Atlantic Ocean and raided Northern Europe as well. The coastal towns of England and the Netherlands weren't safe. In 1631, there was a, a raid on Ireland in 1627. There was even a raid on Iceland family. That's very far north. Yeah. Now, this is all according to this book that I've referenced here, um, which is called, uh, let me just see it on my other side, uh, Barbary Bow by Reginald Wright Kaufman, illustrated by somebody else. But even in this illustration, even in this illustration, these don't look like the sand people. And I don't want to say the N-I-G-G um, um, Echo Roger. I don't want to say that word, but these because that's the, the racial term for those people over there. These don't look like sand people. These look like brothers. I look like man man in the gang. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me continue. I'm sorry. All right. So. Uh, by the prophet crumb this history is all good but what about the prophet well let's let's see what the prophet had to say by the prophet nobuju ali and i quote the industrious acts of the muslims of the northwest and southwest africa these are the moabites hamathites canaanites who were driven out of the land of canaan by joshua i want to ask the listening audience because we know back then there was no letter j when i say joshua according to the prophet who is the prophet referring to when he says Joshua? 
When the prophet says Joshua, because remember there was no letter J back then. Who is the is the is the um the prophet referring to? I'll give you just a second because you know we're we're tight for time as of right now, but I do want to engage with the audience. I do want to engage with the family because you know you're here with us. So I just want to kind of put some, you know, acknowledge you, you know, get some crowd participation going if that's okay. I don't want to overstep my boundaries. Definitely. Um, let's, let's, oh. looks like we have some people. Yeah, we are. Thank you. Have people chiming in. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Lots of master students, lots, lots of good brothers and sisters who know the language family. The Bible told you that God was going to use the language to confuse you. Tower of Babel. So let's not talk babble. Let's understand the language because that's how he, that's how God said he was going to confuse you in the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament. Yeah, uh, not by Joshua. The original name is Yahshua, or as we know today, Jesus. And received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in a portion of Egypt. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called this day Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, etc., this is Al Magib. Okay. Um, and if we look right now, I don't know if the family knows this, but the majority of the population in current day Morocco today, to this day, today is Jewish people. If you look uh, now, this is what the prophet says, this slide right here. But if you look at, you know, just Google it. Um, how did Moors get into, I'm sorry. How did Jews get into Morocco? Because they were kicked out of uh, their homelands. This is around the time when Jesus was battling with the Romans and and they're going to tell you those Jews got kicked. This They're not going to say this about Moors, but if you go look up Jews getting kicked out of their homeland or, or people getting kicked out of their homeland, they're going to say, oh, the Jews got kicked out by the Romans during this particular time. This is exactly what Noble Jew Ali said, except he, he just changed the word Jew to Moabite, Hamathite, Canaanite. G go Google it if you don't believe me, but let me continue on. All right, so. For over 300 years, pirates from North Africa terrorized merchant ships across the Mediterranean Sea. Europeans called them Barbary pirates. The word Berber itself comes from the word barbarian in ancient Greek. The Europeans would refer to, to modern day Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and Liberia as the Barbary coast. They would often target European coastal towns and cities kidnapping slaves. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, there are estimates that go up to more than a million Europeans enslaved by the Barbary pirates. Moving on. Now that I, um, well, see, this is the thing. Somebody said not Jews, Israelites. If you Google Israelites, you won't get it. Family, you can't confuse people. I'm telling you how to reference this stuff. If you go and be a goofy, and you Google, Crumb, I didn't find it because you Googled Israelites. You're not going to go. If you debate a Christian, you better go to the Bible. If you debate a, a, a Muslim, you better go to the Quran. If you go on Google, you better talk European or you'll never get the answer. Remember, master students, to, to get the right answer, you must ask the right question. If you want to play this game and type and, 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 and Google Israelites, then you'll never get anywhere. If you Google the right question, only then will you get the right answer. That's all I want to say. I'm not debating Israelites or nothing, but I'm saying if you Google that, you, you, crime, I looked it up. And, but anyway, look at this picture, family. Speaking in intelligent tone. And you shall receive a favorable re reply. Yes. Um, but yeah, so with that said, um, if you look at this picture, you're going to say, wow, this picture kind of reminds me of something, you know, because it's, it's a European. This must be European slavery. Even though if you look at the back, you're going to see the, the dome on that mosque. You're going to see the dome on that mosque in the back with four pillars. Oh, this ain't Europe, family. This ain't Europe. And look at those palm trees. This ain't, this ain't America. So now you're going to see a European enslaving other Europeans. And that's what you thought it was. No, that's not what it is. It's the same as this picture. They, the, the, the powers that be got the... Uh, uh, the captives to be middle management. So when you look at this picture and you look at this picture, just know you're looking at the same thing.
Because every time they got one of us to come, Mariscos, crunk the, Mar the Mariscos were Moors who sold out. Remember, back then there was no such thing as black and white. Those terms hadn't been invented yet. It was just Christians and, and Muslims. So when they subjugate, let me see what you got, brother. If I can add one thing to that that picture that you're holding up, this is the, the book Golden Age of the Moors. Now, um, in this book, there's several scholars in here. And I believe, uh, I could be mistaken, but I believe it was uh, brother um, Jose Pimenta Bay, who's a professor at, at one of the universities out here in Kentucky. And he talked about how so many Europeans were enslaved in North Africa that that led to the lightening up of that population. That's where you get the present day Arabs that are, uh, you know, look like they're of the pale skin European. Youth. Teach. And, yeah, <laughs> you got the sources for that too. Golden Age of the Moors. Teach, Muhammad. That's right. So yeah, what we're gonna see is a European who works for the Moors and a European is wearing a fez. This lets you know, because when you talk about Moriscos, Moriscos were the Moors that sold out and became European, I'm sorry, became Christians. Well, you can stay, you know, after the um, the Alhambra decree, they said you got to leave Europe or Spain. And it was like, you, uh, caveat, you don't have to leave if you convert to being a Christian. So um, on our side, you could rock with us, but you had to co convert to our faith you couldn't be a christian and work for us same thing over there um in america you know you had to take you know toby you had to take the master's name because only christians had last names anyway um moving on in 1756 elizabeth marsh was captured by barbary pirates and published her experience in her book the okay uh her experience in her book the female captive a narrative of fact which happened in Barbary in the year 1756. The book recounted the story of her experience as a captive and reflected on sexual violence and her bid to survive whatever means possible. On arrival to Morocco, the fate which awaited her as the solo female traveler became clear. With the prospect of becoming a sex slave in a harem of the ruler, uh, Sidi Mohammed, uh, Sidi Mohammed, uh, for four months, Elizabeth made, made it her mission to survive, including being subjected to the prince as his concubine. That being said, Marsh's status as a female captive also made her an expensive, notable, uh, made her to experience notable different, notably, made her experience, excuse me, notably different compared to her male counterparts, or I'm sorry, compatriots. Whilst her enslavement was punctuated by sex, the men were forced into demand, uh, demanding physical labor and poor conditions to which, as a woman, she was not subjected. And this is her book by Eliz uh, Elizabeth Marsh, The Female Captive. So um, we can see in, you know, so many words that slavery was very different from for uh, for the males than it was for the women. The women didn't necessarily have to go through hard times or whatever the case may be. But she did have to do something strange for uh, uh, for a piece of change. <laughs> Mo moving on that was just a me being silly all right so uh 1198 the trinitarians beg for money from the medieval period to the early modern period piracy and slave taking in coastal regions of southern uh, of southern regions was such a problem that the religious order of the trinitarians uh, trinitarians was established to free captives by crowdfunding <laughs> They were crowdfunding ransom money. The Trinitarians, formerly known as the Order of the Most High, of the Most Holy Trinity, and of the Captives, is a uh, mendicant order of the Catholic Church for men founded outside Paris. And if I pa could get you just to pause right there, please. What you're saying that, that um, what you're reading about them having to crowdsource money, ransom money, to get people out of slavery, right. Europeans out of slavery. That's wild. Because there's actually a congressional record, this early congressional record where people like uh, Thomas Jefferson, they're speaking about having to pay ransom to the different Barbary states. And they wanted to keep it on the hush because they didn't want the public to know because they were embarrassed that they're paying this money to dark skinned Moors. And this is actually on the record, you know, in our history. It's crazy. Absolutely. Papal documents referred to the founder only 
as Brother John, but tradition identifies him as Saint John of Matha. The founding intention for the order was the ransom of Christians held captive by Muslims, a consequence of crusading and of pirating along the Mediterranean coast of Europe. It was so bad, they had to ask Jesus for money. <laughs> I'm just, just being silly. Uh, yeah, let's continue on, unless you want to say anything else. Oh, no, no. Please. 1390, we're going in chronological order from here on out. The Barbary Lost Crusade. Um, Genosi ambassadors approached the king, uh, approached the French King Charles VI to subscribe to a crusade. They eagerly supported the plan to fight Muslim pirates from North Africa. A joint uh, Genosi, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Let me just see if if I can put some respect on that name. Not that I necessarily care, but um, I'm just curious because I went, I came across that problem the other time. Uh, pronunciation. Here we go. Let me see what this says. Is it, okay, here we go. Genoese. I'm sorry. There we go. Genoese. A joint Genoese, which is Italy, French attack on Tunisia city of Mahdi that was aimed at reducing pirate activity coming from the city. Listen, we got to click up and stop these dudes. These pirates had their main base at Mahdi, uh, Madia on the Barbary coast. Genoa was ready to supply ships and supplies, 12,000 archers and 8,000 foot soldiers, foot soldiers. If France would provide 1,500 knights, this, this is for, for, um, you know, for, for the layman, this is a military operation. This is a joint military operation because it's that bad that's right so now remember this is 1390 1492 the reconquista did you know after the reconquista the moors were expelled from Spain from spain under the um the alhambra decree they had lost their ships their ports and their trade routes some of them turned to piracy as a rear guard guerrilla sea military tactic they terrorized the the length and breadth, which breadth means width, of the Mediterranean Sea for generations, robbing Christian ships, seizing their occupants as booties for sale in North Africa, uh, Africa uh, for sale in the North African and Turkish markets. So, um, when did piracy really kickstart? And this is from um, Mr. M. Hotep. Some people call him Dr. M. Hotep. I just want to put some respect on his name. Salute. But yeah, with that said, the whole piracy thing doesn't really kick off there is a little here and there prior but that's not you know that's just because the, the ottoman empire and it's a very small sector it doesn't become notable until after the reconquista for oh, 1492 columbus sailed the ocean blue i get it i get it but there was something else happening while he was doing that which is piracy moving forward raided by various germanic tribes for two centuries that's 200 years it was concurred in 17 in 774 AD by Charlemagne under the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, remember, after Rome fell, this is the next thing greatest to Rome. Oh, crumb Charlemagne. The only reason Charlemagne is a notable name is because he's the equivalent of, of 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 Caesar. If you don't know, anyway. Um, raided by various Germanic tribes for 200 years, it it was conquered in. 774 AD by Charlemagne, King Charlemagne, under the Holy Roman Empire, a bunch of Germans, but they called themselves Franks or French, which fought for control against the Saracens. After a period of feudal anarchy, the island was transformed to the papacy, then to the city-state Pisa and Genoa, which retained control over it for five centuries, that's 500 years, until the establishment of the Corsican Republic, in 1751. The Latin term Saraceni comes from the Semitic root SRQ to steal, rob, plunder. More, spe more specifically, from the noun Sarik or Sarikini or Sarikin. My, my Arabic is off. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Which means thief, 
Marauder, you marauders. Plunderer. In his Levantine diary, discovering, uh, covering the years 1699 to 1740, the Damascene writer Hamad bin Somebody used the term Serekin to mean travel on a military mission from the Near East to parts of Southern Europe, which were under Ottoman rule. We ruled Southern Europe. Remember, it was this whole thing that with the medieval brother. Can you bring you and me up to the screen one, uh, real quick? Uh, just you and me. When, when you're dealing with the dark ages, castles, the moat with the alligators. I don't know where the hell y'all got alligators from because alligators aren't indigenous to Europe. <laughs> But anyway, you know what stopped the Middle Ages? I'm sorry, the Dark Ages, when they stopped doing the castles, they stopped doing the fortress, the moat, the alligators. Do you know what stopped that? What's that? It was, it was the Ottoman, or, or actually, it was the Turks. The whole battle between, you know, the formerly known as Ottoman Empire, when they went up against them, they fought them with technology. This was the real first real use of gunpowder. You're like, okay, no more, no more castles. Yeah. It was the Moors that stopped that. Just uh, want to, you know, let the people know. You, you can share a screen again. I just want to make that point. All right. So um, they came over there, and after they um, they uh, they brought that cannon. It was a cannon the size of New York. <laughs> I'm just joking. It wasn't that big, but it was a huge cannon. And they brought that cannon over there, and. They use sophisticated technology to make the to make the Europeans say, "Hey, we're not going to do the Dark Age thing anymore." So after after that, it was it was basically the Moors, what uh, uh, or the Muslims rather, started ruling Southern Europe by way of um, what city was that that they destroyed? The city that they destroyed with that cannon was Constantinople. This was the Hagia Sophia, which was the first church, because this is a this is a holy war, Christians versus Muslims. The Hagia Sophia was destroyed uh, and made, you know, from a Christian church to a uh, to a mosque. This is over in Constantinople, which was re uh, 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 renamed what? I want to ask the listening audience because I'm a master student. You got to be a, a master student as well. Um, the Hagia Sophia, uh, Hagia Sophia. I, I might be asking the wrong question. No, 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 not Constantinople. Constantinople was renamed to what once once Muslims took over? Constantinople was renamed to what? After the Moors or Muslims took over, it was no longer Constantinople. It was what? I'm, I'm asking the listening audience. I just want to see what Moors know what and what Moors, you know, are still in transition to kind of get into that next level um istanbul thank you we got some whoo reginald tim's l again i'm seeing a pattern here folks and it's not turkey no <laughs> <laughs> it's istanbul right after the conversion of constantinople to istanbul we ruled anybody know what ruled means we ruled southern we ruled Southern Europe. That's ours. That's me, bro. But let me, I just want to put some, you know, put some respect on history. You know, this month I'm joking around, but we don't call it uh, Black History Month. We call it Lack History Month. So this month is Lack History Month and we're going to get some history. So, uh. <laughs> and this, look, this is very much needed because you know where they start Black History off at. <laughs> <laughs> Teach Muhammad. <laughs> so yeah, right. we have to we have to um put it in the proper perspective. Like they start us off in chains. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody going with that narrative? Happy lack history month. <laughs> we we gonna have to tell the truth, all of it. But uh anyway, uh here's some Europeans and they've they're flying flags. They're flying flags, and these flags are... Oh, Crumb, I've seen that flag. That's not a melanated man. That's not a boar. Well, fine. Well, what do you make of this? Because that brother heavily... It, it doesn't take much to be darker than me. <laughs> 
but he's definitely darker than me. Shoot. M moving on. Uh, let me let me continue on. Oh, am I in the wrong spot? Um, please forgive me. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, I I'm back on track. Uh, or am I not? Okay, here we go. No later than the fifth century, Christian writers began to equate the uh, Saracens with Arabs. Now, I seen somebody in the comments who put Saracens equals. Hold on, somebody in the comments. Oh, Saracens slash Moors. Thank you, uh, Dupont Noble Bay. I hope I pronounced your name right. Please forgive me if I didn't charge it to my mind, not my heart. I want to put some respect on your name. But yeah, the Saracens, uh, they started to equate them with Arabs. Saracens were associated with Ishmaelites, descendants of Abraham, the son of Ishmael. The writers of Jerome are the earliest known version of of the claim that Ishmaelites chose to be called Saracens in order to identify with Abraham's free wife, Sarah, rather than uh, as uh, Hagarians, which would uh, have highlighted their with, association with Abraham's slave woman or slave wife or, or concubine or his second wife, Hagar. Um, Hagarians. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Anyway, this claim was popular during the Middle Ages, but derives from Paul's allegory in the New Testament letter to the Galatians, uh, then from historical data. Remember, the Galatians, wh why would he talk about the Saracens in terms of uh, writing to the book of Galatians? Go back to the book of Galatians and read it again. Go read Galatians again. Galatians was written to the people of Gaul. The Gauls were the people from Portugal. The Gauls were the people from Iberia. Remember, Iberia, I-B-E-R, which is really E-B-E-R. What does E-B-E-R stand for? What does E B E not stand for? What does it mean? E B E R. He's writing to the Galatians. The Galatians are the Gauls who are in Iberia. What does E B E R? There were no French at this time. Well, I'm sorry. The French are the Germans, not French. When when I say French, you think German. French, German. I'm, I'm just being. It was just a joke. Okay. <laughs> not funny, Crumb. Fine. Not funny. Well, remember, by the time the Gauls get to France, they've migrated. They migrated. What does I E? B Thank you. Thank you, Cold Stone 36. We listen, family. Y'all not just gonna sit here and listen. You're gonna participate. You're not just gonna sit here and listen. This is not TV. <laughs> this is a group discussion. This is not just between me and him. This is you know, me and a good brother. This is all of us. Our people left. Uh, uh, the continent of Africa traveled up. Oh, crumb Hebrews to cross over. Yes, we crossed over into the Iberia. Eber, Hebrews, you, Moors, you went over into Iberia and you traveled up to France where you established yourself in that area as well. Portugal, Gauls in France, that's all you. So when this guy Paul, if he ever existed, I don't think he existed, but Paul, when he writes to the Caesarians, um, um, the Seracans, excuse me, the, the, the sons of Sarah, that's you, bro. That's you all day. I mean, according to the Bible, if you believe that type of thing. <laughs> Moving forward. Uh, brother, did you want to add anything to this or shall I continue? Uh, no, you're doing a masterful job though, brother. I'm, 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 I'm humbled and honored. You know, I, 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 I do these things for my people. Mr. M. O. M. Hotep, I gave some uh, respect to him earlier. I want to continue with that theme. He says Africans were the masters of science. It has always been that way. The Moors using the science from Kemet developed it to the point where they mastered the science of sea travel, uh, cartography, navigation and piracy. During that period that lasted for centuries, no European nations, no European nations. Anybody know what no means? <laughs> no European nations or ships could dare mess with them. The career of pirate 
was a prosperous one. These Moorish adventurers grew rich and their strong places on the Barbary Coast became populous and well garrisoned. Today, when we think of pirates, we see a European face. That identity has also been whitewashed. Ow! Stop playing with me, happy Lack History Month. Africans once again have given a minor role within their own history. And Spain and Portugal, who were the first European nations to bloom, actually did it thanks to the science and achievements that they had from the Moors. Of course, who occupied those territories before them. Moving on. Or did you want to say anything, brother? Oh, no, no, I agree. Been long. Uh, high honors to Paris the more. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for everybody who agrees and disagrees. You know, this is no gang banging. You're free to disagree, and I will still give you honors. I'm just grateful that you're you're interacting with us. Salute to everybody in the chat. Okay. Um, the Alhambra decree. I spoke about it earlier. Let's get into the details if we if if we can. AKA Edict of Expulsion. It's a Spanish word. Decreto de la Alhambra. Uh, edicto de edicto de Granada, meaning ed, edicto of Granada. You know, when I came into Moore science, I was so tired of Moore's talking about the Battle of Gr Battle of Granada, Crumb. The Battle of Granada. The Battle of Granada. Okay, fine. The Battle of Granada. Nobody, you know, are 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 we just parakeeting each other, or does somebody really know about the Battle of Granada? So. Um, the Alhambra decree was an edict issued on the 31st of May on the 1492nd century. I'm just being funny. The 1492 by the joint Catholic monarchs of Spain, which was there was no Spain at the time. It's Iberia. Isabella the first and Castile. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Isabella the first of Castile and Ferdinand the second of Argonne, ordering the expulsion of practicing Jews. Crum, this was to be about the Moors. Slow down. Slow down. What did I tell you in the beginning? What did I tell you? I told you right now, the, the biggest populist, the biggest ethnic group in Morocco are Jews. The biggest ethnic group in Morocco right now. Go over to Morocco right now. Who are you going to find? A bunch of Jews. Somebody better tap in. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm trying to go somewhere. I need somebody to follow me. Ordering the expulsion of practicing Jews from the crowns of Castile and Argonne and its territories and possessions by the 31st of July of that same year. In my best Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, get out. Get, get to the chopper. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Alhambra, home. Hold on. Hold on. Where's my oh, wrong button? Get to the chopper. Alhambra, home of the last Moorish kings. Family, I did not type this. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. I didn't type it. A lot of this stuff you're seeing in the comments, I typed it. But this are, these are screenshots. Most Jewish pirates were Sephardic Jews. The biggest demographic of Jews on the face of the earth are Ashkenazi Jews. The second biggest demographic of Jews on the face of the earth right now. Anybody know when right now is? <laughs> the biggest demographic of Jews on the face of the earth right now. The second biggest are Sephardic Jews. The first biggest Ashkenazi. That you, you, when I say Ashkenazi, when I say Ashkenazi, you think German. Ashkenazi, German. That was the, the German thing again, folks. Remember when I talked about um, uh, Charlemagne? That's not Franks. When, when I say French, you say German. When I say Charlemagne, you say German. When I say uh, Ashkenazi, you say German. Anyway, we, 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 family, even a goddamn dog got his own nationality. A German shepherd. <laughs> even a dog got nationality. Y'all better get your nationality. Stop playing with me. Anyway, most Jews, uh, most Jewish pirates were Sephardic Jews. They were, uh, they are a Jewish diaspora population who coalesced in traditional in traditionally established Moorish communities, like the ones in Alhambra, Grenada, in Iberia. The term Sephardim uh, derived from, from Hebrew, Sephard, literally Spain. 
also sometimes refers to Mizra, uh, uh, Mizra'i, Mizra'i Jews of Western Asia and North Africa. This is according to Britannica.com, the next one uh, in, in the black circle. Alhambra, palace, fortress, facts, maps, pictures. Alhambra, place and fortress of the Moorish monarchs of Granada, Spain. When you say Granada, Gren when I say Granada, I want you to think, let's say, um, uh, California. But when I say Alhambra, I need you to think Los Angeles. Granada is a big place. Alhambra was a small place inside Granada. I hear Moors talk about Granada all the time, but they never mention Alhambra. I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to mention it. The Alhambra is considered to be the finest example of Moorish architecture in Europe and is remembered and is a reminder of the influence of conquering Moors influence the conquering Moors had on the culture of southern Spain. I didn't write that. I didn't write it. Now we're going to break down the Alhambra decree. Alhambra is where we get words like Alamo. Remember, Alamo was in Spain, Spanish. Who were the first people to come over here? It was the Spanish, so-called. Well, the uh, Spanish is in America. It was the Spaniards. Those people weren't Spanish. They were Spaniards. This was um, the House of Habsburg. The House of Habsburg was the first ones to leave Europe. It was it was a Spanish crumb. Who? What Spanish? N can you name them? Oh, well, uh, uh, thank you. The Spanish you're referring to are really Germans. The Spanish that you're. Ref yes. House of Red. House of Bourbon. Take your ass down to uh, Louisiana. Take your ass down to Louisiana. House of Red, House of Bourbon. We were here first. We established the whole Louisiana Purchase. That was our land. Louisiana Purchase was was was, was no. The Louisiana Pur Purchase was the vast estate that was stolen and sold. In Gaul, France, you Germans, y'all better tap in. Anyway. So when we look at Spain, I'm sorry, when we look at Europe, I'm sorry, America, and we think of the word Spanish, think Spaniard, think uh, the Habsburg, the, the House of Habsburg. So now um, the House of Habsburg came over here and established a bunch of stuff. So Alamo, borrowed from Spanish, Alamo, cottonwood tree. Alamo, the art of the Alo, uh, Almo Varid and Almo had periods. Um, Almo, Almoverid dynasty, Al Moore. Look at it at the very bottom. I highlighted it. M U R. You're not going to debate me. You're going to debate metmuseum.org. <laughs> Go debate them. I didn't write that. They did. A newly emerged Islamic power in North Africa, ethnically more Berber than Arab. What do you mean, Crumb? What do you mean more Berber than Arab? More barbarian than Arab? No, more Moorish than Arab, okay? So when I say remember the Alamo, because the Alamo was the last stand of the Spanish. So that's the same thing as remember Alhambra, because Alhambra was the last stand of the Moors in Spain. Respectfully, family, I know a lot of people don't like to give flowers and stuff like that. But if I'm making sense right now and you can follow the timeline, can you please give me a 777? I'm, you know what? I'm going to give myself my own flowers. I'm going to stroke my own ego. I'm going to write 777. Here, because we on YouTube. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We on, we on fake book. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> we on fake book, so I'm going to write it over there. And we also on YouTube. I'm going to write it over there as well. I put too many sevens on YouTube, but charge it to my mind, not my heart. If this is your first time hearing this, press 777. Remember the Alamo was the Spanish last stand. Remember Alhambra? Because that's where the Alamo comes from. It was the Moorish last stand. Where Oh, the Battle of Granada. 
What are, what, are, what are you talking about? The Alhambra decree? Crime, nobody told me about that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Moving on. Uh, brother, did you have anything to add before I go to the next? This oh next no, one? I'm just I'm just listening, brother. Please continue. Jewish pirates. Many Sephardic Jews turned to the ranks of piracy in the years following the. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go over here. In the years following, where am I at? The Alhambra decree ordering the expulsion of Iberia's Jews. The Alhambra decree was directed at Moors and Jews. Family, if you go into Moor science, oh, well, I'm sorry, into Moorish history, you're going to see a deep personal connection between Moors and Jews. You can't get around this, Moors. Go back and read uh, The Nation of Islam, a.k.a. Farrakhan's book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. Go back and read the book the secret relationship between blacks and Jews written by some people say Farrakhan, but under the title, it doesn't say Farrakhan. It says uh, the nation of Islam, but you get it. Anyway, we have a connection and the Jews ain't going to be able to get around it. And the Moors ain't going to be able to ignore it. The Alhambra decree, the Alhambra decree was directed at Moors and Jews. Jews became pirates and turned on and turned to attacking the Catholic empires, shipping as both Barbary corsairs from the refuge, uh, from their refuge in the Ottoman dominions, as well as privateers bearing letters of marquee from Spanish rivals such as the United Netherlands. Many Jews also were involved in backing Spanish attacking privateers economically. After they were, remember, the Jews were under us. Under. Remember when they were at Alhambra. When they were at Alham, they were under us. We were the rulers. You, Moors, are right here. You, okay, okay, here. Let me put it in a way that everybody can understand. During this time, the Moors were Batman and the Jews were Robin. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just being silly. But, you know, this, this is just to make the learning experience a little more palatable. When I was in school, learning was so effing boring. And I, I just don't want to be my my uh, seventh grade history teacher. And I'm just ready to leave. Somebody, you know, if I'm not laughing, it's not I'm not learning. If, if <laughs> yeah. I'm not laughing, I'm not learning. Yeah. And it but, is, it's understandable, you know, to be turned off by school. It's just blah, blah, blah. You started in slavery. Thank you. you everything. We created everything. Oh, somebody is in this joint teaching. They said Corsair ships were Corvettes. The emblem is two Moorish flags. Cold Stone 36. Shots fired. You better teach. You better teach. But anyway, here, let me calm down. Blood pressure. I ain't take my blood pressure pills this morning. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't take blood pressure pills, but let's keep reading. Many Jews also were involved in, in backing Spanish attacking privateers. I, um, uh, they viewed this campaign to be profitable, a profitable strategy of revenge for their expulsion and the Inquisition's continued religious persecution of their Jewish brethren in both the old world and the new world. They didn't just attack Muslims because remember, no such thing as black and white at this particular point. Black, the whole black and white thing don't come till later. At this point, it's, it's only a holy war. That means your religion versus my religion. Remember, Christianity attacked both Muslim and Judaism at the same damn time at the same. Damn, uh, you know, so uh, the Jews were fighting with in, in tandem with the Moors as, as get back the big payback. You know, shout out to uh, James Brown. Uh, the age of exploration was in part enabled by the crucial navigational advances developed by the primary Jewish Mo Moroccan um, cartographic school, as well as Abraham somebody's something. Sorry about that. Um, Zach uh, Zacuto, royal astronomer and historian of Portugal, left Portugal rather than become Christian. Vasco de somebody. Um, even lent his name to the Jewish pilot Jasper of, De, of Da Gama. 
Many Jews also worked as ship navigators, suddenly expelled from Liberia. Their knowledge and skills in ship navigation made them enemies of the state and were contributing factors to the development of Jewish piracy at that age. So the, the Moors had the ships, the Jews had the navigational uh, te technology, you know, or, you know, the maps and stuff like that. So t together, our powers combined, Captain Plan. Okay, family, you know what? <laughs> When I was a kid, I watched too much TV. Guilty. Guilty. After Jews were expelled from Iberia, many of them settled in the friendlier Muslim lands of the Mediterranean, the Ottoman Empire, for example. Like their Muslim compatriots who were likewise expelled in 1492, Jews were also looking for revenge against Iberian Christians by sharing with Muslims the newest military techniques and secrets used by Christians. They also joined in on Muslim anti-Christian piracy of the Mediterranean. Ain't that something, y'all? Ain't that something? So now, if you look at this particular Jew, he's wearing purple. When Jews came to America, what, what was the name of the Jewish gang? The biggest Jewish gang in America. Remember, bloods were red. Um, uh, Crips are blue. What was the name of the Jewish gang? It was a color. That's your only hint. What was the name of the Jewish gang when they came? He's wearing it. What was the name of the Jewish gang when they came to America? I'm, I'm let, let me look at Facebook to see if anybody over there get it. I'm going to give you a couple seconds, even though, you know, there's a little bit of a lag. You know, you're probably hearing this five seconds after I say it. What was the name of the biggest Jewish gang in America? This is back when Jews, Irish, and uh, Italians were really big on the you know gang banging thing. This is before you and I ever clicked up on that type of you know uh, energy. Um, and three, two, one, zero. The Purple Gang. The biggest Jewish gang in America was called the Purple Gang. Jews, when they were clicked up with the Moors on those ships and they were gang banging on the ships, they were called the Purple Gang. Somebody's very close. They said Violet, but no. If you Google the Purple Gang, then you'll find out the Jews were the Purple Gang. Oh, the Bloods, that's red, yeah. The Crips, that's blue, yeah. But the Purple Gang were the Jews, and they started that when they were pirates and gang banging, you know, operating in, um, operating in a black market, so to speak. But moving on. Um, Somebody was born to a Jewish family which converted to Christianity under the pressure of the Inquisition. Uh, young man, I'm, I'm going to skip past this. This is just, you know, a Jewish guy who was under the uh, Moorish rule. Moore, Moore only had a red flag as seen in these depictions. Jews added the five points of the green star. The original Moorish flag was only red. The Moors flag was a solid red flag. It later got a pine tree on it. That whole thing with the five pointed star didn't come until the Jews came in with us. Prior to the Jews, there was no red, there was no green star, no five pointed intertwined star until the Jews came on board. Because their star was a six pointed intertwined star. But when we got to this land, that's, you know, they added a uh, pine tree onto it. But that's something else. You just look at the flags. And if you see a boat with a solid red flag, that's a Moorish flag. That star didn't, wasn't originally up there. Um, at least not in the Barbary states. Um, so now, oh, crumb, this whole Jewish Moorish thing, you reaching. Hold on, family. Hold on. Hold on, family. Just give me a second. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> Nobuji Ali did not establish the temple He resurrected the temple Go back and read the 101s He resurrected the temple This picture right here is before Nobuji Ali It says the Moorish Zionist temple I'm sorry The Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews and you see the intertwined six-pointed star above them. You see the six-pointed intertwined star above them. This was the temple that, that, that Noble Ju Ali came to. 
This is the temple Noble Ju Ali came to. The temple fell down and, and Noble Ju Ali resurrected it. He didn't invent it. It wasn't his idea. He saw that it fell to the ground and he picked it up. It was already there. The, 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 you know, he didn't make anything. Y'all better tap in. More science is old. Noble Ju Ali didn't make more science. The more science before the, there was the more science of temple, there was the temple. Uh, I'm sorry. Before there was the more science the temple, there was the temple of more science. You know, it might not sound significant, but it's it's, it's different. Let's let's move on, though. I don't want to harp. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. 19. Uh, I'm sorry. 19. Fifteen <laughs> twenty one. Jesuit blood oath to never let Moors rule Spain again. I was talking to somebody and I said, how come y'all always just harp on the Moors? I'm sorry, excuse me. How come y'all always harp on um, Illuminati? Ooh, no, Illuminati, crumb, Illuminati, Illuminati, Illuminati. <laughs> Brother, can you bring you and me on screen, just you and me? Have you noticed that these conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hat people, they're quick to talk about the Illuminati, but they never bring up the Jesuits. Do you notice that? Oh, yes. Yes. Nobody talks about the Jesuits. Nobody talks about the Jesuits. Ain't that something, y'all? Uh -huh. Okay, let's, you know, let's go back to the, the information. All right. 1521, Jesuit blood oath to never let Spain's, uh, never let Moors rule Spain again. Um, question, who founded the Jesuit order? And why? Answer, according to history.com, Jesuit order established. The Jesuit movement was founded by Ignatius Somebody, a Spanish soldier turned priest um, in August of 1534. The first Jesuit, Ignatius, and six of his students, master students, took vows of poverty and chastity and made plans to work for the conversion of Muslims. This is in Spain right after 1492 whoever is left we're going to capture them we're going to convert them over if you ever see the word morisco the moriscos were converts of people like ignatius and the jesuit order in 1521 ignatius was wounded in both legs when defending some place against the jews and uh, uh against the troops of france uh, uh i'm sorry francis the first the reading of the flower, uh, the reading of the flowers of the saints during this um, convalescence uh, led to the conversion and uh, led to his conversion, and he resolved to devout the remainder of his life to the service of God. Yeah, right. He aspired to become a kind of religious Don Coyote and make war against the Moors of Iberia, where at that period the Mohammedans family they weren't called muslims at that time they were called muhammadians the muhammadians were very numerous commerce being in the hands of the jews and the uh the uh mu musulmans the moors and moriscos were not yet assimilated with the jews and placed under surveillance in the inquisition they could still meet together without fear of disturbance provided that they exercise prudence and tact. The incurable lameness of Ignatius' war wound rendered the accomplishment of his aim impossible, so he announced that he had received from God a special mission to undertake the conversion of the Mohammedans. The whole thing about the Jesuits is to make sure that no Muslims, yeah, uh, Muslims, uh, Dupont Noble Bay, who is truly a master student i might have to get with you after this live it seems like you know a thing or two shout out to all the master teachers and master students the jesuits are based off the moors this is all happening in spain they make a blood oath that the moors will never rule again these are the jesuits so the next time you want to cry and yell out about the jesuits you better take a second to think about uh i'm sorry cry out and yell about the you and illuminati they're up to something Okay, so the Jesuits are just innocent. Everything's a little, it's the Masons, Crumb. Everything is the Masons and, and the Illuminati. It, nothing about the Jesuits, huh? Okay, no problem. 1544, too many slaves. When Algerians captured the Bay of Naples and enslaved 7,000 Italians, 
In 1950, and oh, I keep saying 19, in, in 1544, Algerian corsairs sailed into the Bay of Naples and captured it. They then took an astounding no amount of 7,000 Italian slaves. The number of slaves taken by the Algerians drove the price of slaves so low that it was said you could swap a Christian for an onion. <laughs> a Christian, because remember, there's no such thing as a white man. Yeah. That term wasn't invented yet. A Christian was the equivalent to the value of an onion. We got too many of them. God darn Christians, they're everywhere. Get out, get out of here. Like they're like strays in the street. Moreover, it was said that the reigning Christians, uh, it, it was said to be reigning Christians, according to the Algerians. 1562 through 1523, first voyage. Question. Uh, no, 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 no. Wrong slide, wrong slide. Hold on, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up. John Hawkins was the second son of William Hawkins, who was the first Englishman to sail to Brazil and Joan something place. Um, I've got three minutes left and I'm only on slide 26 and we have 80 slides to go, which I'll never get through it. Uh, but let me just see. Can I skip forward? Um, here are some pirates. I'm sorry. Here we go. Here are some pirates. This this one pirate on the right, you know, he might be not dark enough for some of us. Fine, no problem. But this person that he has as a slave, as a captured person, that's blonde hair, blue eye. That's Cody. <laughs> um hmm, within my last couple of minutes, what do I want to say? Nah, I'll just I'll just end it here. I got a lot more to go, but I'll 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 never get through it. All right. Um. Well, with that said, um, that's my time. Uh, I I actually have an interview on my channel with um. What's that guy's name? Jamal Bay from Rise of the Moors. I will be having a conversation. Uh, at seven o'clock. Well, I, it starts at six thirty. I'll just play all his news clips. But at seven o'clock, that's when he'll actually be on the platform. And uh, we're going to talk to him. Um, you know, he got locked up on gun charges, moving cross state, body armor, everything you could think of. They, they threw the book at him. <laughs> and he's he had, you know, he was kidnapped, but he's he's going to be he stands as a free man to this day. So, uh, yeah, uh, brother, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about trying to do this again? I'm definitely up for it, you know, um, even just some of the last things you were speaking about, speaking about uh, the Jesuits, Don Quixote. Oh, man, we can really um, go deeper into that topic and really blow people's minds. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. Let's let's talk on the side. Um, definitely. We should revisit this. In addition, to that, I want the family to know he's going to be on my platform. This yeah. this this build, he has he has one. Uh, I'm tr he has one very similar, very similar, uh, where, where he expounds. See, you know, and, and, and I'll let this be my last words. One of my biggest competitors is going to be someone to the effect of Sonnetter. You, you see over there where they battle each other, they disagree with each other, they tear each other down, so on and so forth. That's, that's, that's been a, a hallmark of, of, of our community where the only time we can grow in any way is if we tear each other down, which seems to be counterintuitive to me. Uh, so I want you and I to, to, to work together in unison, in tandem, and we're going to battle that energy with the energy of solidarity, with the energy of adding value. Yes. So for the listening audience, he's going to be on my platform, and we're not going to debate. Sorry! <laughs> Yeah. We're going to add value. So, yes, yeah, stay tuned. That's all I have to say. Thank you again for having me. All right, man. It was a pleasure having you on, brother. Peace and love. Everybody, make sure to tune in. Subscribe to this brother's channel as well. We will be on there uh, going further into this topic. And I, you know it's going to be a great build. But everybody who's here, though, please make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Make sure to share this video. Make sure to revisit this later on. Go into the video description. Check out all the links for this brother. Appreciate having you on, brother. It was a pleasure. Peace.
All right. Good one. Well.